our brand new suppliers, Swift Biosciences and Cefetil Vorsa. So today we will be talking about big data, complex NGS workflows, simplified. So before we start, um, I just have some uh, admin. Uh, please ensure that your microphones are muted. So I know that uh, Thomas said that you're already muted, so that's great. Um, we will have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Um, so please keep your questions until then, or um, just use the, tab, uh, the chat function um, that you'll see also on the webinar um, uh, toolbox. Um, then the webinar will also be recorded, so uh, we'll be sending the link to everybody as well as a very short link to or a, a link to a very short survey that um, um, we invite you to please complete. Um, we would really uh, value your feedback. So um, the, we won't keep you to too long today. Um, what we will focus on is the solutions that we provide. So I will do a quick introduction to White Scientific that most of you will already know us. Um, and then I will give uh, both Swift Biosciences and Safetor Vorsom an opportunity to pre present the solutions that they have. Um, we have uh, recently um, brought them onto our NGS portfolio and they actually have a very complimentary product offering um, as, uh, for, the, for the clinical market. Um, so we will go through uh, the different um, uh, solutions that we have. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Jacques Dupree. I am the Next Generation Sequencing Product Manager for Whitehead Scientific. Um, we also have uh, two of uh, uh, my fellow presenters, um, Gerardus Dambruskas. He's the Director of Commercial Operations for the EMEA region for Swift Biosciences. And uh, Dr. Thomas Kuchera, uh, he's the Head of uh, Business Development at Safetol Vorso. So first of all, um, let me tell you a bit more about uh, Whitehead Scientific. We are a company that strives to provide the most effective solutions for a wide variety of application areas. And this is keeping to our motto um, of bringing quality products to market, um, having the ex expertise to, um, to effectively support that. So products, expertise, and support. So the company is a privately owned company. We were founded in 1988. We currently have a team of 37 people with our head office based in Cape Town. So we cater for the, uh, these six application areas, as I mentioned, and in able, uh, uh, um, able, if we're able to support this, we need to have the um, reputable suppliers and here you can see our comprehensive list of suppliers that we currently cater for um, and, and have brought to the market. Um, when we select our suppliers, we, we have, uh, you know, we do it very critically. Um, we make sure that we can, um, we, we provide the most uh, suitable and cost-effective solutions um, for the different application areas. And today I'm very proud to announce as well the two different suppliers. Um, so currently we have um, our NGS portfolio. Uh, here you can see we have six product lines with different application areas going from, uh, uh, um, you know, fragment analysis uh, to um, specific DNA fragmentation. We have uh, solutions for the uh, PGTA market, uh, forensics, and even HLA typing. So Whitehead Scientific will continue to play um, in the NGS field. Um, I think we are the most experienced local um, uh, vendor uh, and uh, we will continue to play in this space and therefore I'm very proud to announce that we've uh, brought both um, Swift Biosciences and uh, Safet of Awesome um, under our, our umbrella um, of products and we strongly feel that we'll be able to make a, an impact and simplify your current NGS experiments. So without uh, uh, any further ado, I'd like to hand the stage to uh, Gerardus um, that will provide you with an overview of the solutions that Swift um, has on the portfolio. So hello everybody, everyone. I will just about to share my screen. Um, uh, thank you very much, Jacques, for the introduction and uh, thank you uh, to uh, Whitehead Scientific, our new partner uh, for South Africa. And uh, I should also say thank you to Thomas, uh, our longstanding partner from uh, Warsaw Sefoto now. And uh, 
without further ado, I will dive into the uh, presentation for uh, Swift Amplicon panels. And I did a, a short subtitle, uh, Confident Detection of Variance from Various Sample Inputs by Sequencing. So today I mainly focus on uh, uh, one of our many products that we develop, uh, that is Swift Amplicon panels. And uh, a quick snapshot of the company. Uh, we are based in uh, downtown Arbor, well, in uh, not far from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, we develop the, uh, we focus exclusively of, on developing the NGS library kits. Uh, we don't do anything else. And this is uh, our library kits are compatible with Illumina, Ion Turret, and to some extent, Pacific Biosciences. <coughs> uh, Swift Biosciences also developed a broad range of IP portfolio, and that covers also the um, Amplicon panels that I'm going to talk about. Uh, we focus on the cell-free DNA, FFP samples, hard to get, uh, hard to, um, um, hard to extract uh, sample types, uh, also PCR-free libraries. And uh, we address uh, whole genome sequencing. Uh, so we have the, the library uh, preps for whole genome sequencing uh, with the target enrichment uh, by hybridization capture or by Amplicon uh, enrichment. Uh, we also have the kits for bisulfide sequencing uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, Amplicon sequencing, and we also do custom Amplicon panels. Uh, the company is ISO certified. So the whole range of products that we offer, um, today I'm going to um, focus on Amplicon, but before that, uh, just to dive in, uh, we do have a, a products, as I mentioned, for whole genome sequencing, and these are the, uh, uh, products listed here for uh, wall exome sequencing. Um, uh, today I'm going to focus on Excel Amplicon panels. Uh, they fit un uh, under the targeted sequencing. So you're yeah, enriching your target by Amplicon PCR. Uh, the other enrichment method is uh, uh, by uh, hybridization capture. So we also have the exome capture panel available. We do have the product for the RNA sequencing and uh, we also have the uh, uh, kit uh, that will normalize uh, the inputs uh, when you pull uh, before you do sequencing. We call it Swift Normalize. And Swift Normalize is a unique product. Unfortunately, I'm not going to go today and talk about it because the, the theme is Excel Amplicon panels. So this is where uh, the main focus will be. Uh, as I mentioned already, uh, we have the off-shelf panels available. Uh, they are, um, uh, you order them, they are available as a pre-designed. Uh, they are available for the same day, almost same day shipment. And I'm gonna briefly describe those. Uh, we also are very big on the, and do have a, probably about seven years experience now with the Excel Amplicon custom panels. Uh, where you provide us the uh, gene content, we customize it, uh, we uh, develop the targets, and then within four weeks you will get the fully validated panel on your doorstep. Besides that, uh, uh, we also have the high sensitivity panels. So we do have this big technology with unique molecular identifiers or uh, MIDs um, where we uh, call where our panels enable uh, variant calling less than 1%. And the off-shell panel we currently have is the EGFR panel uh, as a standalone panel. So this is the uh, Amplicon workflow. If, if we just focus on to, uh, it's a two hour, very short protocol. Uh, first is the uh, target enrichment by multiplex PCR and you get the enriched regions. And then uh, it's an indexing step where we ligate the adapters um, and they are uh, then subjected, the library is complete and it's subjected to the uh, sequencing. Uh, it's a very elegant to our workflow. Um, and uh, we, as uh, you will hear later from Thomas, uh, the data analysis is supported by Varsum and then we've been already 
partnering with uh, Varsum uh, for more than a year now, and we have uh, a lot of customers using Varsum with our panels. So these products are fully compatible and fully streamlined into the into the analysis and uh, later the uh, report generation. Uh, most of our panels focus on the uh, uh, 1% or more of uh, uh, allelic frequency. We do have, as I mentioned, a high sensitivity panel which will focus and which allow you to call less than 1% allelic frequency. And this will be at the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, we take uh, uh, different uh, samples uh, from cell-free DNA to FFPE DNA and uh, the threshold uh, for the input is about 10 nanograms and as I mentioned these panels work on Illumina and Ion Torrent and um, um, we guarantee on target for the off-shelf panels on target so 90% of your reads will map to the uh, genome and coverage uniformity so we'll cover about 90% of your target and these are very cost-effective way of enriching uh, a small number of samples, a small number of genes. So how we uh, compare to competition, uh, we are a two-step protocol. So it's a multiplex PCR, multiplex enrichment, and in the indexing uh, step where we ligate the adapters. Our closest uh, competitors have a longer protocol, as you can see here, and uh, uh, some uh, other protocols also even take about a day to complete. Uh, this is a little bit more detail how we compare. Uh, so it's a two hour protocol versus the uh, more than, than that. It's a single tool, two PCR. So we do have the reactions in uh, allowing us, so our IP uh, allows us to multiplex uh, up to 1,500 amplicons in a single tube compared to our competition where they do have multiple tubes. This is also allows us to do uh, SNVs, uh, indels and uh, copy number vari vari variants. Um, these are, uh, so we design, we design, we have uh, um, pre-designed panels as I mentioned and we do also do the custom panels. What is important here that we validate uh, the custom panels before we release uh, the custom panel to the customer. So we do in-house sequencing. And this is what distinguishes us from the other competition where they don't do the pre-validation of the custom panels uh, before it get, get released to the customer. The sample types, so we deal with the somatic mutation types or somatic uh, variants and germline variants, as you can imagine. Uh, these allow us uh, different sample inputs. They are just all listed here. I won't go uh, detail by detail. Uh, for somatic variants, you pre there is much more uh, uh, sequencing uh, needs to be done because these are highly mosaic, highly mosaic samples. So it requires uh, much deeper sequencing for germline, copy number or uh, SNV detection, variant detection. You would not that need such a deep sequencing, probably around 30x versus 300x for somatic uh, variant detection. Now, as the world turns into uh, heavy focus on the SARS-CoV-2 uh, SARS uh, research, we also launched that panel. Uh, we tested it on synthetic template and uh, uh, these are also, this is also a very amplicon panel focusing on the full uh, SARS-2 genome. Uh, this is the reference that we use that is uh, fully available. Uh, what we used and uh, we did the already initial initial sequencing uh, initial data this is a very very early data that we uh, released 99 percent of reads align to this uh, reference genome and uh, also 99 percent of the target bases have a more than 10x coverage uh, and this is how it looks uh, this is 29 kb uh, SARS-2 genome, as you can see, here is the IGV browser, and these are the actual stacked reads. Uh, you may be able to see these are actually covered regions uh, enriched by the amplicons, and there are 341 amplicons that we use for this panel, so this is quite a substantial panel, and these panels are in, in tiny blue 
uh, dots listed here, and these are the coverage that we see. So this is, uh, this is used, this panel we hope uh, to be used for the mutation load or mutation mapping of the, uh, of the genome rather than detecting uh, and giving you a yes or no answer. Now I jump to the available off-shelf panels that we got. Uh, so we focus on the gene-based panels uh, on the left here and then the disease-based panels. So these are much more complex uh, sets of genes that we target. And then on the left, these genes are that are recommended by the American College of Medical Genetics uh, uh, Association for Molecular Pathology. So these are the institutions that we follow the guidelines and we address those genes on our panels. So here is the 56G panel, and this is one of our uh, top seller panel uh, that we currently have. Uh, this is the full information. This is the gene list that we cover. What I wanted just to highlight that the TP53, we cover all exons are covered on this panel, just as, a, as to highlight a detail here. Um, this is the um, 57G, so it's a, a one step uh, uh, more uh, or one gene added panel. So it's the next generation of 56G panel. And I uh, just wanted to highlight that uh, not, we, not we just can detect the, um, the, copy, uh, the uh, variants the, uh, uh, that, that, that we cover, but we also uh, can detect the uh, deletion in that panel. And that deletion is the, in the exon 19 in EGFR. Uh, it's a highly, highly um, described uh, deletion and it's uh, associated with the response on non-small cell lung carcinoma. And it's a druggable, druggable de deletion. Um, I wanted to highlight here. Not we uh, can only detect the um, uh, single nucleotide polymorphism or variants. Uh, we can also detect the uh, uh, copy number variants. So here is the uh, uh, Herceptin 2 uh, or ERBB2 uh, copy number variant detection detected by giving uh, more reads from the region that are uh, reflected by just by, by amplicons indicating here above the thresh threshold. So here is the one copy and here is above one copy uh, number change. Uh, we also have the bracket panel. I won't go into detail here. This is, uh, again, these are the variants that were highly described in the ACMG or American uh, College of Medical Genetics and so on. Uh, so we follow those guidelines and the genes are um, indicated there on that panel. What I wanted to also uh, go into is the uh, actual process, how we make the custom panels. Um, the customer submits the gene symbol uh, or bed co coordinates or DB SNP uh, coordinates or DB SNP uh, uh, data. And then we run the initial design. We go back to the customer. We provide the bed file, uh, the description of the of the actual design, uh, the recommendations, our recommendations from our experience, uh, what we can or what we cannot uh, cover. Uh, the customer comes back to us and says, uh, I want to increase that coverage or decrease that coverage. Uh, we reiterate the design and then we finalize. The customer accepts it and then we ship within four weeks uh, the design. Prior, prior we do that, we conduct the wet lab testing on a controlled DNA. Uh, and this is the uh, part of our delivery. And then once the customer runs the data, we uh, provide the support uh, and uh, we could enhance the design, redesign it, uh, upgrade it, and uh, we are very flexible on that front. Uh, this is just an example of the exon. So this is the exon that we are looking at. And these are the actual tiled amplicons uh, covering that exon. Uh, we do a padding if the customer requests for exonic uh, intronic junction, as you can see here. So this is also possible. Uh, and uh, some of the, uh, uh, as you can see here, amplicons can overlap. 
if there is such a request. So we have a lot of experience in doing that uh, bioinformatically. Now, there's some data. Now, what are panels, what's, uh, what is the feedback from the, uh, from, the, from the market? How do our panels perform? So this is the 56G oncology panel. Uh, as you can see here, it's been published in 2019. It's a selective publication. Uh, we do have a lot of publications. What I wanted uh, you to focus is that the first thing is that this is a cell-free DNA that the customer ran and uh, they did a sequencing on P10 and they identified the allelic frequency of 0.6%. Now, uh, most of the customers do a uh, validation studies using the, the digital PCR. So by digital PCR, they were able to detect 1.9% of allelic frequency, which is very good. And I also wanted to focus on the 0.8 allelic frequency uh, using TP53. And by digital PCR, they were able to say, oh, this is 1.4%. So not just as I mentioned, uh, we are working with above 1% allelic frequency in the studies. In some cases, you can uh, see very close to 1% allelic frequency uh, that our panels uh, can provide. And there is another example here. Uh, this is again, this is 2006 plus medicine. Uh, this is where 56G panel was again used uh, on a cell-free DNA, on a germline DNA, as you can see here. And uh, there's a lot of data here, but I just blew some data up. So the uh, data on the left is the uh, uh, allelic frequencies by, identified by NGS, and on the right is the allelic frequencies identified with the digital PCR. So we have a um, very high co co uh, correlation with the <laughs> uh, digital PCR data. And this is all above 1%, as you can see here. For the uh, working with the uh, uh, less than 1% frequency, we do have uh, the uh, technology where we call uh, uh, the variants with the low, um, low allelic frequency. And before I do that, I just wanted to give you some idea of uh, what the allelic frequencies. Uh, if you're working with 1% allelic frequency and your input is uh, 10 nanograms, uh, 10 nanograms a sample, uh, you are looking at 30 copies of the uh, human genome. So this is a very tiny little amount of DNA and the technique has to be very, very sensitive. Now, if you are working with 0.5%, uh, um, so less than 1%, you are, you are looking for 15 uh, genome copies in your sample. And that addresses uh, the input versus the uh, um, allelic frequency detection that you can can um, get, which means that you uh, uh, with a very low inputs, you cannot detect, in this case, 10% of input, you cannot detect less than 0.5% uh, allelic frequencies, just the biology. So you have to increase your input to be able to go down. Now, how we do we do that? We do this by using the molecular identifiers, UMIs or MIDs, some people call it. And since it's a heavily involved, heavily PCR involved method, you're doing amplicon PCR, then it's a PCR uh, uh, or it's a, a sequencing uh, by, um, by synthesis again. So you can introduce these uh, high um, error rates uh, just by, by chance, by accident, and that will not truly reflect the actual uh, copy number or SNP presence in your sample. So by adding the MIDs indicated here, prior to you do the amplification. And by the way, when it happens, you, uh, just by doing the PCR, you cannot really tell whether it came from a PCR error or where it, that actually it was a true variant. By adding the MIDs prior to the PCR technologies, you were able to distinguish whether the false, ver false variant came from a PCR uh, method or uh, that variant was maintained, it was in the original sample. 
So that's how we do this uh, by a high sensitivity panel indicated here. This is the workflow. So we use the uh, primer, um, uh, primers that have the MIDs built and we use only three cycles of the PCR. So we are adding those variants. Or we are, sorry, we are adding those MIDs and uh, hope, hoping that the true variant uh, will be reflected with the MIDs. And then by doing the PCR, we will find whether all the uh, PCR fragments contain the same variant. If uh, the PCR in this is the PCR2, uh, these are actually 21 cycles. So these are highly, um, uh, highly abundant samples that you get after the second PCR. So if one of them uh, doesn't uh, have the variant across all the MIDs, these will be dismissed in the further analysis. So we're looking for the uh, fragments with the same MID contain uh, at least that same variant. That's how you can reduce noise and then you can, that's how you can uh, work with uh, less than 1% uh, allelic frequency. So our, this is the protocol that we developed. Uh, it's uh, slightly longer uh, than our uh, normal uh, Amplicon product, but it allows us to work with less than 1% uh, allelic frequency. And by saying that, here is the um, uh, simulation or the data that we did, free MID analysis variant calling. As you can see here, here is the allelic frequency indicated by the arrow. Uh, this is a 1% allelic frequency. So some of the variants ver fall very close, uh, very close to 1% allelic frequency. Now, when we do the post MID call analysis, which means that we are taking all the, uh, all the uh, MID uh, tags, and we're looking for um, variants that are present in all the same MID, we can uh, remove the noise and we can actually maintain the false, uh, we will take away the false positives away and we will have just the positive, the true positives here. And then uh, as you can see here, we had one variant that was not removed. It was a false positive uh, indicated here. Uh, we did uh, some also runs with our panel uh, with the uh, reference standards. So you can uh, get the reference standard from uh, uh, the company with the expected variant frequency and the observed variant frequency. And we did that in uh, replicates. And you can actually see for themselves that the observed uh, allelic frequency is very close to the expected allelic frequency. Uh, and to summarize, so this is the uh, high sensitivity EGF far panel that we've got. Uh, these are the inputs that uh, I just uh, mentioned and the uh, uh, allelic frequencies uh, that this panel is designed for. There's a 17 amplicons just to give you uh, some ideas how big these panels are. Uh, these are the hotspot mutations that we cover. Uh, these are the uh, read recommendations for every panel. We do have a read recommendation of how many reads uh, we would expect from the, uh, from the customer to run on the sequencer. And this is uh, compatible with the Lumina and Ion Torrent uh, as well. And uh, again, now I will turn to uh, Thomas uh, as our panels will be analyzed and he, Thomas will uh, go through the presentation of what analysis, how it's done by Sepulter and uh, thank you very much for listening. All right, so this is Thomas speaking. Um, let me share my screen. Do you see now my screen, the Warson page? I can see it, Thomas. Oh, okay, thank you for confirmation. All right, so uh, let me start with my presentation here. So exactly, so where, I'm, where Gerardas, you know, has ended, uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, continue here and uh, I'd like to tell you how you can uh, uh, process and interpret, you know, uh, NGS data. So, 
But first, let me quickly introduce uh, our company. So our company is called Safeter and uh, we are the precision medicine and uh, bioinformatics company. Uh, we are uh, based in Switzerland and we are on the market since 2014 and to be develop tools for processing and interpretation of NGS data specifically for uh, clinical purposes. Let me start with the challenges in bringing NGS technology to the, to the clinical practice. There are many challenges out there, obviously, but from our perspective, as a bioinformatics and precision medicine company, we are focusing on three challenges in particular. Challenge number one is the fact that the annotation data are fragmented and spread over many data resources, right? So the the annotation process or interpretation process, it can be seen actually as a puzzle game, right? To get the complete picture, you need to place all the little pieces together in the right places. Challenge number two, that this is pretty much a never ending process because our understanding gets better pretty much every day, which means what was valid yesterday doesn't have to be valid tomorrow or the day after. And the third challenge is the lack or little standardization in and consistency in interpretation of, uh, of variants. <clears throat> so in total, it means that assessing, you know, a pathogenicity for a variant, it's very time consuming, very time consuming and uh, very challenging process. And that, that's actually what we are focusing on, on the interpretation part of the pipeline. So uh, these three challenges are in fact the reasons why uh, we have created Barsom, the free and open platform. I believe you've seen it before, as I'm saying it's free and open so you can try it anytime you like. And so Barsom, it's a knowledge base and community around it. So first, what Barsom does it aggregates and cross-references a publicly available data resources. So currently we have integrated over 50 data resources into a single cohesive knowledge base, which we call, call Varsom. So you can find you know, the data from various data resources, such as you know, GNOME AV, from CleanVar, uh, somatic data resources such as ICGC, PMKB, Civic, Cosmic, annotation data resources for copy number variations, all the transcripts, expression profiles, clinical trials, a list of drugs, clinical relevant data for genes, phenotypes and diseases, and so on and so on. Over 50 data resources matched together. On top of it, we keep the data on Varsam always up to date. So whenever there is an update in GNOME AD or in CleanVar or somewhere else, we get the update and we process it and make it available on Varsam in a very short, in very uh, short uh, turn around times. So you have always the latest annotation data on Varsam. And then on top of it, we implement guidelines for standardization of the interpretation process. So for example, now you can find the interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines as a part of the platform. And now we are also implementing additional guidelines for somatic interpretation, such as AMP, MCCN or ASCO. And these are coming uh, pretty much these days as we speak. However, the Varsom, the free platform, the free knowledge base, it's not only about annotation data, it's also about the community around it. So Varsom accounts with over 200,000 users globally using the platform and every day, using the platform every day and so as a consequence of it there is also a growing number of contributions flowing in from our global community in terms of publication links classifications comments or varsam can also facilitate across border collaborations for example in other words there is also a unique layer of annotation data coming exclusively from our global community this is the quick you know introduction to the free platform now 
on top of it, we have built Warsom Clinical. So Warsom Clinical, it's already a professional uh, service, a complete solution for interpretation of NGS data, starting from raw sequencing data. You can start either from FASTQ or from VCF. So Warsom Clinical, it's certified as an IVD device. It's certified as an in vitro diagnostic medical device. So indeed, it can be used in clinical settings. Now it's also becoming certified as an IVD device you know, in South Africa. Uh, the platform is also HIPAA compliant, which is very relevant for our US based customers and our company. It's obviously a GDPR compliant and we are also certified with ISO certificates for data quality and uh, data security. So with Warson Clinical, you can process your NGS data in four steps. First, you are supposed to upload your sequencing data to our server in Switzerland. So we operate a number of deployments, but most of our customers actually use our physical server located uh, in Switzerland under our full control. And so that's where you are supposed to upload your, your raw sequencing data, FASTQ files or VCF files. Uh, with Watson Clinical, you can process any kind of NGS data, be it a, you know, exome or genome or commercial a gene panel, such as you know, a, a gene panels provided by Swift Biosciences. Or we can take also your custom built, you know, home built uh, gene panels or assays. In other words, you can process any kind of NGS data. Uh, as long as you sequence on Illumina or MGI. We also support, you know, Thermo Fisher, Ion Torrent and Pads Bio platforms, but in those cases, uh, we shall start from uh, VCF directly. Uh, once you upload your data, you can run the pipeline. So Watson Clinical uh, offers a wide range of pipelines covering pretty much all the clinical use cases. So we have pipelines for germline samples, pipelines for somatic samples. We have a pipeline, for example, for uh, de novo variants in trios. Uh, we have a pipeline for matched pairs, tumor versus normal pairs, including a pipeline for copy number variation and structural variation. And the latest edition, actually, it's a pipeline supporting UMIS the unique molecular identifiers for detection of low frequency variants typically found in uh, somatic samples, as Gerard was you know, uh, saying uh, a few minutes uh, ago. Um, we regularly participate in the FDA uh, precision contest. So this is kind of like a, a bioinformatics you know, a benchmark test organized by the Food and Drug Administration Office in the US. And so here you can see the sensitivity and precision. It's over 99.8% for SNPs and Intels. Varsom Clinical comes with a website interface. It runs on our server in Switzerland and you access it you know, over the internet as if it was a regular website, which means you don't have to worry about the underlying hardware infrastructure. You don't have to worry about security and updates. The platform is constantly being updated and available all the time. And at the end of the process, uh, you can generate a clinical report, which can be fully customized according to your specific needs and to your specific workflow. I'd like to stress out again that we are really focusing here on the interpretation part. You know, to do the read alignment and variant calling, it's relatively, relatively simple. You know, the real challenge lies in the, in the interpretation part of the pipeline and that's what we are focusing on. Avarsom Clinical, it's not a complete replacement for your in-house bioinformatics expertise. Avarsom Clinical, it's a productivity tool which allows your bioinformaticians to be more productive, more systematic, to focus, to focus the energy on where it is really needed and as a consequence of it, be able to deliver quality results quickly and in turn increase 
the diagnostic yield for your patients. This is all about actually increasing the diagnostic yield, right? Uh, I'd like to share with you just you know the list of our clients. So as a Swiss company, we serve a number number of customers in pretty much all the European countries, and we have also a number of customers on the global scale in the U.S., Latin America, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, and so on. Now, from the business model perspective, Varsam Clinical doesn't have a license. Varsam Clinical charges on a per sample basis. Yeah. And the price depends on the size size of the sample, either on number of megabases in reads or number of variants in VCF files. So no license fee, only sample fee. There are basically two ways how you can use Farsom Clinical. You can use it as a so-called standalone solution. So the standalone solution, it's open for any kind of NGS data, be it a gene panel, exome, genome, open for any kind of NGS data. And uh, we charge you, you know, on a monthly basis, depending on the usage of the platform. So this is nothing else than the regular pay as you go model. The option number two is the bundled solution. And that's where our partnership with Swift Biosciences comes into the picture. So the bundled solution consists of the essay bundled with Warstone Clinical for data interpretation and reporting. And so in this way, we can deliver a truly complete uh, solution which covers the wet part as well as the data interpretation and reporting part. And this is also a form of prepayment. Right? So basically you can prepay here, for example, 48 analyses belonging to Swift Biosciences 56G panel. In fact, there is a third option. Uh, we can also install our tools locally on your premises, but this makes sense only for large uh, diagnostic centers and for large uh, hospitals. For most of our clients, our uh, server in Switzerland is the best option. Uh, we collaborate with distributors. So here in South Africa, we have become, you know, uh, partners with, uh, with uh, Whitehead, Whitehead Scientific, who is well aware, you know, familiarized with our tools and services. They are, you know, able to provide you, you know, a, a, you know a, they, they are able to, able to answer your basic questions and provide you, you know, the first level of support. However, our team, it's always available for, you know, for more complex. Uh, questions, for example. So this is again just a very quick uh, introduction to our company and to our products. Now, in the next 10 minutes, I'd like to show you the user interface of our tools. 10 minutes, it's not enough to do a full demonstration, you know, I would need at least like half an hour, 50 minutes, ideally. So I'm just going to show you very quickly, you know, how how it works so here you can see the the free platform the warsam for example here and here you can see for example uh, you know, the result an annotation data for a particular a variant in a brav gene here so as i was saying before here on a single page you can see the annotation data from all these 50 data resources plus contributions from our global community so wealth of annotation data available on a single page plus the interpretation of pathogenicity based on ACMG guidelines. So this is the cornerstone of all our products, the interpretation based on guidelines here in this case, based on ACMG. So here you can see that six criteria fired based on the evidence. We always consider multiple pieces of evidence wherever possible. So in the case of PP5, for example, we consider Clinvar entries, Uniprot entries, contributions from our from community and so on. It's also a very transparent implementation. Each criterion is explained in a great detail in a, in a plain English, allowing you to review each particular criterion and possibly, you know, make your own judgment call. Not all the criteria can be fully automated. Certain criteria require patient specific information, so you can always trigger or untrigger you know the criteria in line with your with your best knowledge for the particular case and you can also for example specify the transcript for the interpretation based on acmg guidelines 
So this is a free and open platform. Uh, you can try it and use it anytime you like. Now, on top of it, as I was saying before, we have developed a Warson Clinical, which is already you know, the complete a professional service where you can start directly from FastQ or from ECF. So once you upload your data, you can launch the pipeline. So here, for example, uh, you shall specify the type of the pipeline, whether it's a single sample, family trio, couple, germline pipeline, a somatic pipeline. Here you shall specify the assay. So here, for example, you can see there is a number of Swift Biosciences assays already available. For example, the 56G, 57G, uh, lung cancer panel, and so on. Uh, you can specify the reference genome and a couple of other options, and then you can launch the, the analysis. Every step of the process can be also automated over API, over, automate, uh, our, uh, over application programming interface, which allows you to automate every step of the process. Now, once the analysis is finished, you get the, you get the results here in the form of, of a variant table. So here you can see now a whole genome sample with uh, 5 million variants. The variants are sorted by pathogenicity in line with ACMG guidelines. So again, here for each variant, you can review the, you can review the, the ACMG verdict and the criteria which fired for every single variant here. And then around the variant table here, you can see all the annotation data, uh, population frequencies, clinically relevant data, all the transcripts, HPO terms, uh, the region browser where you can see all the variants uh, within a given gene, uh, ClinVar entries, Caviar entries, Bravo, ICGC, COSMIC, and so on and so on. All the annotation data from all these 50 data resources. Now, uh, here, for example, you can also see the gene, which is, which is linked to the variant, mode of inheritance, function, zygosity, and so on. The coverage, this is a link which takes you to the JBrowse view where you can see the graphical uh, representation of reads. So this is a single sample. If it was a trio, for example, you could see the alignment for, for all three samples for the child, mother, as well as, as the father. And so an IGV is also available as an option here. Now the platform comes with a number of QC report, quality control reports, which you can access under the menu here. So for example, here you can access the basic, you know, the basic QC report. And this is the basic, you know, QC report for, for the 56G panel from Swift Bio. So here you can see the summarization of, of the pipeline, the data resources used for annotation and interpretation, summarization of the primary and secondary part of the pipeline, number of reads, persons on target, summarization in terms of coverage, in terms of uh, classification, the number of pathogenic, likely pathogenic variants, summarization according to each individual ICMG criterion, and so on. So this is the basic QC report. However, there is even more comprehensive report called the coding coverage report, which is basically an Excel sheet where, where you can see, you know, the sequencing depth broken down by, by the gene, by uh, chromosomal position, and by, by, by specific transcript and in zone number, and you know, the sequencing depth. So this is the place where you can identify the regions with the low coverage or regions uh, which have been skipped altogether for some reason. So this is the place which allows you to troubleshoot issues with sequencing or issues with essay design. Now, filters. So, while some clinical comes with a powerful uh, uh, filtering cap capabilities, so for, for example, here on the left side, you can access, you know, the dynamic filters. So you can filter based on various criteria. So, for example, you can filter based on allele, allele frequency, based on ACMG criteria, chromosomal position, pathogenicity, function. There is five UTR splicing, coding variant gene list, you can set up a list of genes actually and use it as a filter 
calls that use the number of reads coverage and so on. So let's say we want to filter out only rare variants with a frequency less than one percent and we also want to filter out only pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants. So now we are setting up a filter set. A filter set may consist of several, several filters such as pathogenicity filter and frequency filter and now let's apply it to the whole genome sample. So again, this is a whole genome sample and as you can see the filtering works really fast. So based on these two filters, we have narrowed down the list of variants to, to only five variants. We can always deactivate certain filters or bring them up again or we can even modify the whole filter set and we can now add additional filter based on ACMG criteria based on PP5 criterion with a supporting strength of the evidence. So again, let's apply to the sample and now we can see that we are left with only two variants in the variant table. So this is the way how, how uh, uh, dynamic filters work. And there are even more powerful filters called algorithmic filters. So algorithmic filters can be fully customized according to your specific needs and to your specific workflow. So with algorithmic filters, for example, you can call de novo variants in trios or you can perform compound heterozygous variants or you can perform segregation kind of analysis and so on. And all these filters are always included in the sample price. Yeah. There is only a sample fee which you pay, you know, at the beginning and then all the filters including filters for CNVs and structural variants are included in the original sample price. Now just very quickly the reporting. Um, so once you, you know, decide to report the variant you selected here for export and then you can proceed and you can generate a clinical report. You can also download the list of variants in Excel sheet or in VCA file, or you can proceed and generate the clinical report uh, uh, right within the user interface of Watson Clinical here. So, you know, it can be fully customized. You can upload your own logo, set up your colors, fonts, and sizes. And then also you have control over the data to be included. So this is a kind of like an interactive reporting where you can choose the data you you want to include so for example here you can drag in the content area then you can drag in you know the information for for the variant uh, information uh, for the gene you can include the list of list of drugs clinical trials and so on list of publications so it can be can be fully fully customized according to your specific workflow here. So here you can see the variant detail, the AGVS term, exon number, frequency, a list of drugs, list of clinical trials, clinically clinically relevant data from uh, HBO and so on, list of publications, and uh, at the end you can download it as a PDF file or or as a doc file. And again, every step in the process can be automated over, over API, over application programming interface. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm running out of time. So just to conclude, uh, Watson Clinical, it's a complete solution for, for interpretation and reporting based on NGS data. It can process any kind of NGS data, exomes, genomes, gene panels, commercial gene panels, uh, for example, from sleep biosciences. It's clinically certified as an IVD device for clinical use. And uh, it, uh, there is no license, it charges only, only on a per sample basis, depending on the size of the samples. And the platform can be bundled with, with, with essays, for example, with big biosciences essays for, you know, for the complete solution. So with that, I think uh, I would, I would end my presentation now, and I think now, I guess, I think we could take some questions from the audience. Yeah, thanks very much, Thomas and Harades, for the comprehensive uh, summaries. Um, and uh, I do see a few questions. Um, some of them have already been answered, but I will just, for the sake of everybody on the call, I'll repeat them. But uh, let's, uh, uh, let's start with the first one. Okay, so this one probably will be for Gerardes. Um, what goes into the full validation um, of the, the custom panels? 
what is the process there? I think you did touch on that, but maybe just uh, we can um, very briefly uh, go through that. Absolutely, yes, sure. Uh, so what we would do, we would uh, run the uh, shallow sequencing, uh, and then we will check whether all amplicons are uh, providing the expected uh, uh, coverage. So we have products from each amplicon. And then uh, if we do have the internal set parameters, and if, if that passes the pra our parameters, it will, will release the, uh, the panel to the customer. So it's a shallow sequencing. Okay, great. Thanks for that. And then uh, we had another question of what is the size of the amplicons? Um, and uh, Sigerardus did answer here. So the amplicons range from 130 to 150 base pairs. And this will fit into a two times 150 base pair read. Um, Indeed. And just to add uh, for the 16S amplicon panel, we do have longer size amplicons. Uh, but it's just the way it is, they are stacked, staggered. I mean, they are stacked on each other. Uh, they overlap uh, and the sizes are up to 500 base pair. Uh, but this will allow you to fully cover the 16S uh, operon. Uh, I just have to, uh, if someone wants to more information, it they could contact me after the, uh, the, the call. But right. in general, it's uh, between 120 to 150 uh, base pair. Uh, fragments or amplicons. Okay, so and then we had another question. Has the Axel amplicon kit been applied to any microorganisms? Another one for you, Karadis. Yes, I, I answered. Uh, yes, it's a 16S uh, uh, panel, metagenomics panel. It's our product and I did send the link in my answer. Uh, you can also find it on our website. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say. We. Or we can do the custom uh, focus, the panel we did for various microorganisms, but 16S uh, panel is our example, is our flagship product. Great, and then um, we have another question. Um, are you planning on developing a 16S metagenomics kit? Uh, uh, this person has been using um, this, an iron 16S, but quite tedious to do library preps. A more automated process would be a great advantage. Yeah, so uh, Illumina and Ion, Ion Torrent, and uh, I also answered that uh, we will uh, we will help with the automation. We do have a specialist dedicated to automation, and we did already a uh, few automation installments uh, across uh, EMEA, across Europe, okay, and, right. and the US. And this this will be one for Thomas. Um, can I use Vosum to analyze 16S ribosomal RNA metagenomics? Um, I think currently that's not 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 available. So uh, Varsam, you know, the free platform, you know, it's really focused on 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 a single variant, uh, single variant queries. And just for me to add, uh, uh, so we do have a, a standalone package uh, uh, based on or developed on Chime too. Uh, so we do have a model we can share with the customer and we can uh, fully help and we also can use this uh, or offer this as a service at no cost uh, for the person who is uh, interested in uh, using our 16S panel. Great, thanks. Um, then we have uh, two more, uh, actually this is a two-part question. Um, we found a free version of VOS um, to be extremely useful in our lab. Two questions, one. Is there a way to reverse complement the sequence shown on the base page? And secondly, are there any limitations which users should be aware of regarding the ACMG predictions? I'll give that one to uh, Thomas. All right. So, so ACMG guidelines are indeed guidelines, right? You shall always use your, your judgment, you know, to reach the final, the, the final verdict. Uh, so, for example, there is an, another question actually related, you know, to the uh, uh, transcript selection here. Yeah, so, obviously, you know, the transcript selection here can affect uh, the final verdict, right? So, you also have to consider whether this is like a real clinically relevant transcript or only a hypothetical transcript, right? It, it also further depends on whether a particular transcript actually is being translated into a real protein at the end, right? So, that's why 
you can always consult here on the gene page, for example, you know, the GTEx expression profiles, allowing you, you know, to, to select, you know, the, the clinically and clinically relevant transcript uh, related to the particular, particular, uh, particular tissue uh, being affected by, by a tumor, for example. But these are only only guidelines, and you should always, you know, judge your your own, you know, uh, make your own judgment. However, there is a very comprehensive documentation for for ACMG uh, interpretation based uh, classification here. So uh, I really, you know, encourage you to dive into into documentation here first, you know, to better understand what the limitations of the automated interpretation are. Cool. Thanks, Thomas. So um, I've got another question here from Human Genetics uh, at the University of Free State. Um, they are asking for custom designs. Does Swift use a tiered costing approach? One to ten genes, eleven to thirty genes. What is the cost per sample or variant on Lawson Clinical? So um, I think uh, on the pricing side, uh, we will, um, as Wider Scientific, will get back to you with official pricing. Um, so um, I think the best would be is to reach out to myself, um, uh, Dr. Priya, it's jock at whiteside.co.za and then I'll answer that question, um, you, know, uh, you know, on an email. Yeah, from, from our side, uh, you know, we can come up with the pricing based on the size of targeted regions. So it's actually probably aligned with this biosciences pricing model based on genes yeah so that's okay and then i have another question can you analyze whole bisulfide genome sequencing in vaso can you input bed growth or coverage files yes so the coverage is available right in the j browse view and there is also IGV. This is so here the, this gray area corresponds to the to the sequencing depth. And there is also IGV as an option for visualization. Or you can also, for example, download you know to you know to BAM files here. Uh, where? Maybe here. No. No, here. Here you can, for example, download you know, the BAM file and visualize it locally. You can also download the index BAM file. You can download you know, the coding coverage report, region list, region list coverage report. There is a very detailed, a fast QC report also available, uh, available for analysis starting from fast Q files. So there's a number, number, number of QC reports. Uh, which uh, I couldn't really cover in detail due to a lack of time, but uh, yeah, lots of lots of reports available. Thanks, Thomas. Um, then I've got a question for Gerardus. Um, in your intro, you mentioned having NGS kits compatible with both Illumina and Ion Torrent. Your online protocol for the Swift RNA Library Prep Kit um, only shows compatibility with Illumina downstream. Can you please advise? Uh, so we are talking now the, about the RNA kit. RNA, uh, not amplicum. Uh, so we could potentially develop this for ion torrent. We haven't developed this for ion torrent yet. Um, if we see the need and um, there is a enough market uh, critical mass that we will, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then we will be able to 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 provide that protocol. But currently, it's uh, the RNA is um, on uh, on Illumina. Yeah, also has to do with the, the coverage and output per run, I would assume. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, we just have to revalidate the ion torrent uh, adapters. And then I've got one last question from Tabitha Hall. Uh, maybe we would also need to take this offline um, uh, if it can't be answered here. So a patient of, of uh, uh, mine had a variant in TP53 we reported, which is a VUS, a variant of unknown significance in the canonical TP53 transcripts, but a pathogenic variant in, uh, in another one of the transcripts. I'm yep. unsure what to tell the patient. The variant is TP53C.708C uh, G. Yeah, yeah. So this is again related to the ACMG, you know, based interpretation here. As I was saying, you know, the you know the transcript can indeed, you know, uh, you know, change, you know, significantly the verdict. 
So you really need to think about carefully, you know, which transcript to use. You should, you should, you shall always use, you know, the clinically, clinically relevant transcript. Not all the transcripts, you know, are clinically relevant. Most of them are usually just, you know, predicted. And on top of that, not all the transcripts are translated, you know, at the end in, into the protein. So you really need to, you know, you know, see here, you know, the, the bigger, pic, bigger, pic, bigger picture here. And for example, also have a look at the expression profiles based on, you know, tissues here, for example. Excellent. So I, I think uh, for the sake of time, um, I think uh, if there's any other unanswered questions, um, you know, please feel free to send any one of us an email um, and we can address it then. I'd like to thank uh, Thomas and Gerardus again for taking the time to uh, provide us an overview of your solutions. Um, and uh, thanks everybody for joining our webinar. As I said, uh, there will be a, uh, a recording, um, so we'll send through the link and please, um, you know, if you wouldn't mind um, just uh, you know respond to the survey um, we'd really like to see how we can improve you know and get some feedback from the audience um, and I'd like to you know, wish everybody a really happy day in this extraordinary times thank you very much goodbye everybody thank you bye-bye have a good day thank you bye-bye